Welcome back, Shalloners. Well, today we are going to talk about something that I get so many questions about. Fuck boys settling down. Is there anything more jarring or traumatic in this world when you see a player who wouldn't commit to you turn right around to a 180 and get all coupled up, get engaged, have a baby, and you're like, oh, I'm sorry. Am I? I'm not good enough for that dude? For Kyle with mayhem tattooed across his belly, I'm not good enough for him, but this girl is. We're gonna break it all down. And we're gonna talk about this in context of Demi Lovato because her fuckboy ex, Wilmer Valderrama, I was looking up how many girls like in Hollywood he's dated. It's like triple the amount I thought. It's wild. He's like the grand high boss of the fuckboys. Like the one, that, the final boss you have to beat after beating all the junior bosses like Adam Levine. Because Wilmer got engaged back in January and so why are we talking about this now? Well, rumor has it, Demi might be on the track to get engaged to. And we're, I'm gonna tell you how all of this ties together. We're gonna break it all down. But first, just wanna remind you guys that if you have a love question or a dating question, any kind of question, you wanna talk to me privately, one-on-one, -on -one, you can go to my website, shallonlester.com. You can also find me on Cameo if you want a little video shout out, a pep talk, a breakup talk, a birthday wish on uh, Cameo at ShallonXO. And ditto ShallonXO on Instagram, where I let you guys vote on the next video topic. And yes, okay, yes. Tiger King. Can I tell you, I have suffered mightily. I have, I recorded it three times. I never re-record anything. I do these videos in one take, no rehearsal, no notes. And that's, it's like an info dump. And so it's really hard for me to re-record because it's like once I dump the info, like I can't get, get it back again. I have to like source it all. It's, it's agony. And I bought this new microphone because this one, that I'm using now was annoying. So I was like, all right, we're gonna upgrade. We're gonna get a Rode mic. And I was like, if I don't walk away from this Tiger King video, it's gonna be the death of me. Like I cannot take it. So I'm gonna do it again tomorrow. Last time, if it has no sound, I don't know. We're gonna get a lip reader in here and she's just gonna, I, I can't do it. But don't worry, it's coming. I've got some wild theories. I've got some breakdowns of their mentality and how we can learn from these experiences, you know, cause that's the point. And speaking of learning, it's been a weird few days if you are a part of the Chalantourage. And let me tell you something. I have been listening to you. I am not the kind of person who is easily swayed or baited by drama things. Like that's just not, that's just not what we do here. And this channel has grown really, really rapidly because of our sisterhood dynamic and because we listen to feedback from each other. You guys listen to my feedback on your life and I listen to your feedback. And I have been listening a lot to you guys over the last few days. I've been DMing you randomly, if you know, you know. <laughs> and just being like, hey, like here's some stuff that's been put out in the ether on the internet. There's been a lot of really hateful things, but there's been some constructive criticism too. And I'm like, okay, it's hard to separate like one from the other sometimes, but I mean, actually it's not, it's not that hard. I listen to you guys, you know, and you guys are the only people I care about keeping happy here. I care about your growth. I care about your mental well-being. I care about your anxiety level. I care if your lips are glossy. I care if your tits are perky and you're wasting the perky tit years on guys who don't deserve it, right? That's what we do here. So I've been listening and I'm like, okay, I think we're gonna enter like sort of a new, like ascension of the Chalantourage. I've been hearing you guys want more positivity in videos. And I think I, I'm honestly glad to hear that because I want that too. I mean, you guys watching these videos, you connect to it and you have feelings about it. Doing these videos is like so many more feelings. I get gassed up about things. I get gassed up when I answer your questions privately because I, I just, I want you guys to avoid the same mistakes I've made in my life, you know, with dating and stuff like that. So it's really important to me that, that you guys get something out of this. I mean, hello. What's the point? Why do this if I don't care that my audience is leaving this channel better rather than worse? Then like, what's my product? You know, like what's my brand? Am I just a restaurant that can only set the table? Well, some people out there are. And I look at that and I'm like, oh, I mean, I ain't a manager, but that's not a business model I'd engage in where it's just like vitriol, but no substance and no enrichment for the audience. So that's not really what we do here. We're about enrichment and we're about growth. So I want you guys to know that I hear you. But I also want you guys to think about fuckboys. Okay, so let's start talking about Demi. 
So Wilmer and Demi were on and off for like six years, right? And she was super into him when she was 17 and he was like, get away from me. But then literally the day she turned 18, he's like, okay, like let's start dating. Let me, I'm, by the way, yes, I'm in a caftan. This is a swimsuit. It's 90 degrees here. We're going to the beach. I've also, I have no clothes with me besides caftans because I was on my way to Bali um, when the quarantine and the lockdown happened. So I was like, great, <laughs> just gonna wear a bunch of caftans at Target. That's appropriate. It's not the PPE they wanted, but it's the PPE they got. So yeah, I looked up like all these people who Wilmer Valderrama had dated because like I, he was always kind of like that fuck boy guy like when I was younger and I couldn't I never got it like I didn't watch that 70s show so maybe that was part of like the mystique around him I don't know I mean Misha Barton Mandy Moore Minka Kelly Ashley Simpson Demi Lovato Sophia Vergara he Eva Longoria he has ran through some grade A women and some like grade C women but so him and Demi, that was definitely his biggest relationship. On and off for six years, he came and visited her after she had her overdose in 2018, but he was definitely moving on with his life. And Demi, she has had a very, very active dating history too. I mean, the Joe Jonas thing. And all these guys, when they break up with her, they say the same thing. We're best friends, we're best friends, and we're better off being best friends, and I don't wanna lose that friendship. Trace Cyrus said that, Joe Jonas said that, and Wilder Val Valderrama said that. What that means, I don't know. I, th I think it means that they loved her, but she was kind of a mess. You know, whether she is still a mess, I'm not sure. I hope not. But she was definitely going through it. Eating disorders, drug addictions, body image things, cutting. I mean, I I've been there for a lot of that. I get it. And it's, you can't really forge a healthy relationship. I always say, you can't be half of a whole if you don't know what half you are. And dating isn't 50%, it's 100, 100. I'm so sunburned. I'm the only person who's gonna come out of this quarantine with sun damage. I hate, uh. So their relationship ended <clears throat> and she went on. I mean, she dated Luke Rockhold. <sighs> Daddy, I love an MMA fighter. I love like big men like that. Quentin Rampage Jackson. Forget about it. Forget. I have like tried to slide into his DMs so many times and then I realized he was married. I was like, I hate myself. I'm so sorry. Don't DM him and say that. Just move on. But yeah, she's going through a bunch of dudes too. But Wilmer seems to have settled down. I mean, he just popped the question on January 1st to this model, and it was actually, I think, the caption on the Instagram, it said, it's just us now. Maybe it's the PMS talking, but I think that's so cute. Is that not so, oh, I love, mm. but Wilmer's 39, his model fiance is 28, and she actually, does she not look like Demi and Mandy Moore mixed together? Like, yeah, it's like he just stirred them into one person. And Demi, this is why we're talking about this today. Because yeah, Wilmer got engaged in January, why do we care now? Well, because rumors are swirling that Demi's boyfriend, Max Eric, he's gonna pop the question too, right after quarantine. Demi. Girl. It's me here. Are you circulating this rumor yourself? Demi, are you circulating this rumor yourself? It just feels very sus because prior, 15 days ago, Elle magazine reported that a source said they're quarantining together. She's introducing him to friends via quarantine. It's not an official relationship, but it seems to be going really well. Now a fortnight passes and suddenly homeboy's ready to pop the question. I mean, he might be, Hollywood people are kind of nuts. And sometimes when you know, you know, but I've heard that it's actually maybe Demi circulating this. And I was like, I get it. I get it. I get the impulse to do that. Our natural impulse when someone hurts us or when someone moves on is to act like we're doing the, th the same thing. We talk about this a lot, leveling. Dr. Phil came up with that term or maybe somebody else did, but it's when either, when your ego feels threatened and bruised, and when we say ego, we mean our sense of self, like our sense of identity, who we are, our place in this world, where we're going, all of it, all of it. And the ego has so many more needs and it's so much more fragile than the heart. The heart rebounds, the ego, holy shit, not really. So when our ego feels like, oh, like wounded like that, it's natural to, to, to level, we either puff ourselves up 
to get to the level we want to be at of this other person or this situation that has rankled us, or we cut the person in that situation down. Usually it's a combination. Well, I'm getting engaged too, and your fiance's a slut. Now, Demi's not saying that, she might be thinking it, but Demi's also had like a bit of a wave of bad press. She said that she wasn't friends with Selena Gomez. Then this like possible Finsta account came out, which based on what you guys say and the assessments, it's it seems like those Instagram posts are fake. I mean, who has this time? Well, I mean, we've all got time on our hands now in quarantine, but how sad, how sad to use that time for such a weird thing to make fake posts the Demi's putting out about Selena, it's just like, it's just so, I don't know. There's just been a lot of things lately that I'm like, this is literally what you use your time to do. And you're not getting paid for it. That's the crazy part. You're not really, there's no fruit that's coming off this tree. It's just, anyway, whatever. And maybe they're real, who cares? It doesn't matter. But I could see why Demi wanted some positive, you know, stuff to counterbalance this wave of negative stuff so it's like oh my god my relationship's going well maybe she thought that was going to stick it to selena because selena's single i don't know but i understood the impulse and then i was like and it's that impulse is so much more pronounced when it's a fuck boy who has moved on i mean like i said is there anything more jarring i have been there have you ever watched the movie when harry met sally the, I think one of the best scenes is when Sally calls Harry and she's like in just a spiral because her ex, who she was with for like five years, they lived together and they never wanted to have kids. They never wanted to get married. And she's like, yeah, that's just who he, he didn't want that. And I was like, okay, yeah, I'm good with that. And then he gets engaged to a secretary and Sally's like, it's not that he didn't want to get married. It's that he didn't want to marry me. And, oh, isn't that an awful feeling? Because how do you talk yourself out of that? How do you talk yourself out of this concept that you just weren't good enough? Well, that's the thing. It's not about good enough. It's about fit. It's about fit and it's about growth. Wilmer was like, like I said, the grand high daddy of fuckboys. He's 39 now though, you know? And one of two things, perhaps both, have happened. Either he's realizing he can't pull the tail that he used to, like the Bella Thorns, like the Dove Camerons, the Daisy Keeches. They don't want to date Wilmer Valderrama. You are, oh man, they're not into it. I mean, his fiance is like, a, she's a little snack. She's so cute. But like, he's not running through girls. He's not that guy on the scene anymore. And that could be because the scene was done with him. It could be because he was done with the scene. It's like, how fun is that? If you can eat candy all day long, do you? No, a little goes a long way and you're like, I want something a little bit more nourishing and sustaining. At least healthy people do that. People aren't trying to destroy their body from the inside out are like, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a better choice. And maybe he's just like, I just grew up. Maybe he just grew up and he's over it and he wants to settle down. It's interesting though, they were first like publicly linked in April and they were engaged by December. And it could be said that like, hey, you know, when you know, you know. But then what happens if you've got that Wilmer Valderrama in your rearview mirror? What do you do when you're looking at a fuck boy who would not commit, he was ghosting, he was cheating, he was cutting, just the whole melange of terribleness that we see from fuck boys. And then boop, you guys split and he's coupled up. It's the ego. Yes, it's the heart, of course. But it's the ego, because if you're involved with a fuckboy and you get just that sliver of clarity where you're like, that's a fuckboy, this is a nightmare person. Because, I mean, look, your intuition knew it the whole time and she was screaming at you to listen. She was screaming at you to listen, right? And we don't always listen to her. And it's our life's work to get good at listening to her and to accept feedback in a lot of categories of our life. So if you finally were like, ugh, fuck, I got the memo. You know what you feel? You feel mad at yourself. You feel ashamed of yourself. And you might not connect with that shame. You might interpret it as a whole bunch of different things, right? Shame is, is not a fun feeling. We don't like to sit with it for long. And it's also not an ultra productive feeling at the end of the day. A little bit, bit of it goes a very long way. Just a little. And you're like, okay, I got it. I got, I got the fucking message. And then you're, I mean, but do you get the message? Do you got the message that you were with this fuck boy or chasing him or trying to be with him or whatever because there was something going on in your life, in your heart, in your ego that he was like, 
pinging up against, right? He was providing a distraction for you. He was providing a critical validation of some deep-seated belief you held about yourself, which could be, I don't deserve love. Love is supposed to hurt. I, I'm supposed to be with someone who takes advantage of me because my dad took advantage of my mom. There was something in there that allowed that dynamic to keep happening. And you see him move on and you're like, <laughs> okay, 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 okay. okay. He gets a happy ending, and I'm still here in the shit cleaning up the mess he made. He didn't make that mess, you made that mess. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know. But when you're the mess maker, that means you get to be the mess cleaner upper. Get to be, you have to be. But it is a good thing, because that means you control your life. You're actually not a chronic victim of fuckboys you might be a chronic victim of yourself. And it's easier to control yourself and to know yourself and to change yourself than it is a fuckboy. You will never, ever change them. So you gotta look inward and be like, what perpetuated this situation? What perpetuated this cycle? What about him was scratching a psychological itch? And it's not super fun work, but it's, you, we talk about the splinter all the time. If you can pull out that psychological splinter, you feel better. But I know what you're thinking. What do you mean I can't change him? That bitch changed him. He would never settle down. She settled him down. Water seeks its own level. I talk a lot about pigeons and eagles when I talk about you, to you guys individually. And it's kind of like a cheesy example, but sometimes cheesy examples work. Eagles and pigeons are both birds and they can both fly, but they're very, very different. They're very different in how they move through the world in, I guess, almost the standard to which they hold themselves. Pigeons like eat cigarettes and pizza crust and eagles, like they get a king trout, a salmon, and they soar, ah, and they appear on coins. Like they're majestic as fuck. Very few people describe pigeons as majestic. You know, doves are actually pigeons. Is that tragic? When you have a dove release at a wedding, like the white doves, those are pigeons. You have a white pigeon release. There's mourning dove. Anyway, so <clears throat> pigeons and eagles, they don't, they don't intermingle very much, right? And if an eagle was trying to hop around the streets of New York City with the pigeons, it wouldn't be very long until that stopped working for the eagle, right? You are that eagle. And there's a reason. Pigeons flock to pigeons and eagles flock to eagles. We like to be around our equal. And if you see a fuckboy settling down with a girl, he has found an equal. And I don't mean that as a compliment. I don't mean that as a compliment. He might be, now look, I think maybe Wilder Valderrama has grown up. And there's been a lot of time between him and Demi. Like a lot of things change. And sometimes a guy truly needs a year. It could just be a year until they mature. But that means that you can't be the thing that matures him. Time, his own experiences and hopefully growth and knowledge and therapy and shit, that matures a man, not you. You can't even ripen an avocado just by willing it to happen or looking at it. You can't do that. You think you can ripen a whole ass man? You can't. You're gonna make yourself insane trying. It has to just happen. So what you might see is like, I don't know, It just ma he just magically switched. No, maybe there were some things that happened and maybe losing you was part of that. Maybe he's like, fuck, I just, I just, I destroyed a good girl. So then why not come back to you, right? People don't want to be in a relationship that, that they associate with that shame, with that shame. They want to start over and they want to have a fresh new relationship. They want to start over with someone who doesn't ever see them as the bad guy, but who sees them as the good guy, the impressive guy, the charming guy, the clean slate guy. And I get it. And you should get that too. And that should keep us from going back to our toxic exes, right? Maybe fuckboys are doing it right, that they're leaving the situation, something in them is learning and growing and leaving the past behind and stepping into the future. But let's go back to eagles and pigeons, right? Let's say he hasn't learned shit. And that's very likely. It's, it's overwhelmingly likely. I think maybe Wilbur has just because he's older, but you probably aren't dating 39 year olds. You might be dating 23 year olds. I know I am. <laughs> They're a nightmare too. And like, yeah, you see him just move on and settle and get this thing that you yourself have been chasing forever, this commitment. Like I said, pigeons find pigeons. They manage to find him, right? There's just this like interconnected pigeon network or something like a pigeon MySpace. And maybe the fuck boy wanted something you weren't willing to give. 
You might think, oh, I just wanted him. Well, but maybe you actually weren't willing to lend him $10,000. Or maybe you weren't willing to uh, have a threesome with his best friend and film it. Maybe you weren't answering the phone at 3 a.m. to you up. Maybe you weren't allowing him to degrade you in front of others. Maybe she is. I don't know. Maybe what he's looking for is not what you've been looking for. You've been looking for love. Hopefully, unless we talked about that psychological splinter and maybe you were looking for someone to validate feeling bad about yourself. We've all been there. But maybe he was looking for control. Maybe he was looking for someone to turn the screws on. Maybe he was just looking for ego boost. And oh, she's hot and she keeps sucking my dick. So it's like, sure, I'll commit to her. I'm still going to cheat on her. And that's the other thing. You are responding to the social mask of this fuckboy. You're responding to the on paper stuff. You're not responding to the reality. You see that Instagram. You see her tagged. You see all this bullshit, the TikTok duets. You don't see what goes on behind closed doors. This quarantine has been really interesting because, you know, I've been on Instagram and I've been seeing my friends and like outwardly they look like, I mean, the ones who are like married, they have a beautiful suburban house, beautiful children, a pool, all this stuff. And I'm like, oh, they're just living it. But then I talk to them and they're like, I'm going to murder him. They're in hell. And it's just, I mean, I certainly don't want my friends to feel like that or anyone. But it's a reminder that like things are not always what they seem. And everyone puts out the best possible version, not even of the truth, just the best possible version. Truth need not apply here. I'm just going to put out what I want it to look like. Never mind if there's any foundation for that whatsoever. And now we go back to Demi. And now we go back to Max is going to propose after quarantine. Baby girl, what are you, 26, 27? Don't marry a man who wants to marry you after two weeks. That's not healthy. That's not normal, right? And yes, when love is right, it's easy, but it's evenly paced. We, we talk about this in terms of driving. A drive that's easy, you're chilling, you're going a little over the speed limit, you're stopping at the lemonade stand, maybe getting some pie, it's fine. A Demi and Max relationship, if this is in fact the way it is, and I, like I said, I hope it's not for her sake. That doesn't seem like a very sustainable dynamic. That's some Fast and the Furious driving. You're weaving in and out of traffic. You're going 220. That is not a comfortable feeling. You want to be in one of those cars and not the other, right? So I hope Demi is in the sweet little country driving passenger seat, not the Fast and the Furious. It's, it's not healthy. It's dangerous. It's emotionally dangerous. So... She's trying to present something that looks great, like this perfect version of the truth or a fiction or simply a possible scenario. And that is our ego talking. Again, that's our ego talking. None of us wants to see our loved ones move on. It's like Drake said, it sucks, but he's like, you belong to me and that goes on forever. And I was like, yes, <laughs> yes. My exes belong to me forever. And there's like this bangle song, I'll never get over you getting over me. And I was like, oh, that just, it, right? But again, that's possession. That's possession. You belong to me forever. Like my clothes and my shoes and my salt shakers. That isn't love. And that tells me this is ego, right? This is ego that you couldn't change that fuck boy and you had to change him. That was a paramount goal because you didn't really want to change you. It seemed a lot easier to change this fuck boy into, to, to, to turn a hoe into a housewife rather than to turn your own hoe into the housewife that you need to be, right? Your own internal hoe to housewife shift. How's that working out? Does it feel easier? Are you happy? No, I've been there. I spent a decade like this dating, you know, and it's, it's terrible and it's corrosive and it's exhausting. And at some point, it just gets easier to fix yourself than to keep running away. Same with going after your dreams. It just gets easier to just do it, to just try, to give it the old college try and see how that plays out. Because then you have data. Okay, I did a year of therapy and I actually still kind of am attracted to this fuckboy. Okay, now you pull back and you redefine. You pull back and you do version two. 
right? And this is what I encourage all of you guys to do. And like I said at the beginning, this is what I am committed to doing here on this channel. Not drama, not the tit for tat, not the hate. So I'm always going to listen to you guys, but and I'm going to listen to like thoughtful feedback because we are thoughtful women and we are not for everyone. I'm not for everyone. You know, Rihanna's not for everyone. Michelle Obama's not for everyone. Eliza Schlesinger's not for everyone. They should be. They're wonderful people. But, you know, different strokes for different folks. That's fine. So we are going to stay the course in terms of growth and acknowledgement. Because what do we always say? You can't change what you don't acknowledge. So I want to thank my Shaliners for helping me acknowledge some things over the last few days. I think it's great. I mean, growth is often painful, right? We say that growing pains. That's why they're called that. But you got to. And there's no comfort in your growth zone and there's no growth in your comfort zone. So I feel like I pull you guys out of your comfort zone, right? And you guys do it for me too. And I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Because we're not going anywhere. We are the mighty women. And once you wake us, there's no going back to sleep. I want to know your fuckboy story. I want all of it. I also, I was curious, I was trying to think of like a, who the new Wilmer Valderrama is. Like, who do you think it is? Who's a dude who's just running through shit? It's, it's probably some like TikToker I've never heard of. I don't know, but like, is there a dude who it's like, like John Mayer was the classic fuck boy, you know? They, I feel like the early 2000s was just like the golden age. It was the golden age of TV shows about storage units and of fuck boys. And we're in a new golden age. I just don't know of what yet. Calf hands. <laughs> For more, click like and subscribe. And guys, I'm not sure that I can commit to a video a day. I'm, I'm really gonna try, but honestly, just taking two days off was really nice. Like no makeup, but I still haven't put that much back on. Like my nails, I let go. And I was just able to like relax. I was reading books. I was at the beach, getting some sun damage. Yeah, I really wanna stock up on that, you know? Um, so I'm gonna, I will 100% commit to five videos a week. Uh, during quarantine, but I'll tr I'll try for seven. But if if I don't do one one day, I'll be back the next. Don't you worry. Like I said, click like and subscribe for new videos all the time, five days a week. And if you have a love question, find me on my website, shallonlester.com, and also on Cameo and Instagram at shallonxo. If you need some video pep talks or you want to weigh in on some topics and stuff, always happy to hear from the Shalloners. Everyone is welcome. Wake the mighty women. Mwah.